session? Not yet? Ah, okay. Okay. So let's start this uh, section. Uh, today the topic is the economy. Uh, it's a timely topic because uh, tomorrow the Bank of Japan will release uh, the new Tankan, the survey on business conditions. And uh, after looking into that, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is going uh, to announce the final decision on the consumption tax hike. And uh, we have uh, uh, today uh, Mr. Masaki Kanno, chief economist of uh, JP Morgan, Japan, and uh, Mr. Hiromichi Shirakawa, chief economist of Credit Suisse Securities, Japan. They have uh, uh, different views about the impact, the possible impact of this momentous decision on the Japanese economy. Uh, Abe, uh, last week went to New York and addressing the financial community, he said, please buy my Abenomics. But now Abenomics is facing probably the biggest challenge uh, six months after the introduction of uh, the new monetary policy of the Bank of Japan. Um, so, um, Mr. Kano is in favor of this uh, consumption tax hike, and, uh, but uh, Mr. Shirakawa is more skeptical and would uh, prefer a more gradual approach, so uh, uh, maybe an, in, an increase uh, of 1% uh, every year of this uh, um, consumption tax in order to cushion the effect on, uh, on, the, on the economy. And uh, so to put into an international per perspective uh, this, I would uh, I will say that in my country, Italy, the um, consumption tax is going to 22%, and uh, the economy is still in recession, and there will be no fiscal stimulus. The government is collapsing this week, probably, and, uh, the, <laughs> and, the, co and the currency is 40% higher than it was one year ago. So probably it's not a tragedy, but it will be very interesting to listen to this to prominent economists and also former members, former officials of the Bank of Japan. So please extend a warm welcome to uh, Mr. Kano and Mr. Shirakawa. Okay. And Mr. Kano, please start with your presentation. Thanks. Okay, um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, for uh, inviting me to such a, a great occasion at the Foreign Correspondents Club um, in, of Japan. Um, I'm very privileged to be able to uh, present um, the, my view about the consumption tax rate hike. And actually, uh, the, the, this presentation uh, that you may have just in front of you is the one that I used at uh, the pr Prime Minister's office, which was held just a month ago. It was a, like a political show as they invited 60 people and listening to the different views. But in my view, that the conclusion was already there. So it was just a political show uh, organized by Abe Theater. So I think that what you are going to see is a video like a show. And as Shirakasa also attended one of the session and also I attended also the other session. So the, we, are, uh, we are not in the same uh, the, the meeting. But I'm very interested in uh, to listen to um, the Shirakawa-san's views. And just before <coughs> the starting my presentation, okay, um, the Shirakawa-san and I used to work for the BOJ for uh, the for many years, and before joining uh, those uh, uh, the foreign um, the banks, and um, the, so we sh share the same uh, the background. And actually, the Shirakawa-san and I live in the same town in the communities. <laughs> and I, and I, from time to time, I meet Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Shirakawa at the supermarket the nearby. <laughs> and they actually, they, they're always a very nice couple. And <laughs> they, but I, I always go to the uh, supermarket alone. My wife give me, gives me just a shopping list. <laughs> so that's a small difference. But anyway, there are lots of the similarity between this. But in, and also, at the, um, the prime minister's office, uh, the, the, I, was, uh, I could use only eight minutes to ex explain my view, but this time the chairman kindly allowed me, allows me to spend 15 minutes. So that is great. And uh, actually, there are uh, the five point, this, uh, the points for the discussions and in my presentation. The first is the one is the economic background. 
The second is the lessons from the 1997 tax rate, consumption tax rate hike. The third is the sort of the relationship between the fiscal policy and growth strategies. The fourth one is, uh, well, uh, the, my view, the why I should support the, uh, the, um, the consumption tax rate hike as scheduled. And last one is a more general view. So the, what kind of the policy mix uh, is uh, needed for Japan? And uh, so the, let me go through just uh, uh, each slide. The, um, the first and second chart are not so it were quite exciting, just highlighting that the global economic environment is better. Actually, during the past three years, up until last year, uh, the global economy followed the downtrend, and mainly because of the first Europe and China. Those the, so the tail risk on the downside is, seems to be gone now. And so the, well, this year, um, the economy seems to have uh, picked up already. And we have seen in both the monthly and um, the economic indicators and the quarterly figures. And also, the, needless to say, well, Japan's um, the, the economic uh, the performance turned much better than a year ago. And, uh, and also, a third one is uh, uh, the political situation. Now the Abe, Abe's approval ratio is around well, 70%, maybe somewhere between 65 and 70. That is very unusual. And so and Abe will not have a major election for the next three years. So the political environment is unusually stable. So the, my point is that we, if we miss this opportunity, Japan cannot raise the, um, the consumption to tax rate forever. So this is the first point. The second point is uh, on the, how we should interpret the 1997 case. The many people say that because of the consumption tax rate hike from 3% to 5% in April 1997, well, the Japan fell into a very terribly bad recession. Well, statistically, it's true. Well, the, the, uh, the recession started shortly after the, the consumption tax rate hike in April 1997. But look at this chart. And uh, the, this chart uh, well, highlights the, um, what happened to the, uh, the corporate balance sheet. The, it actually was act, uh, up to the 1993, this blue line remained about far above the yellow line. That's actually the capex, amount of the capex exceeded uh, the amount of the cash flows of the, uh, for, of the Japanese corporations. So which means that they ac accumulated the, the debt. And uh, as a result, the firms suffered from the, uh, the debt overhang in the following years. But unfortunately, they, the firms didn't start the, um, the, the deleveraging until 1997. It was in November 1997 when we had the financial crisis that they started the deleveraging. And the, since then, uh, the blue line remained far below the yellow lines. So that, that was actually a terribly bad um, the the significant burden for the Japanese companies. And this is one of the biggest the reasons why Japan fell into deflation uh, the, in the past, um, the, around that time. And uh, the, so in other words, the recession is based on the two things, the delayed uh, the, uh, the corporate the response to the, um, the deleveraging. They should have started the deleveraging sooner, much earlier. The second is the delay in the government response to uh, saving the banking system. Actually, they refused to inject the taxpayers' money until 1997. So the recession is a result of those two things, in my view. But so this time, actually, the, the situation is totally the opposite. The Japanese corporations have more than enough, or the more than <coughs> they have enough the cash at hand. So now, the, actually, the problem we are facing now is how to encourage the companies to spend money. So the government tried to, uh, is trying to give more incentive to farms to spend money for capital investment, but it still remains a big question whether they will follow the guidance from the, the government. And my, uh, although that this is not the main issue in this session, but the point is that still the, Japan, the problem is the role of the Japanese the corporations' the governance. Uh, lack of the governance, which is actually the, uh, still the lack of the role of the shareholders, it is a basic problem, and without it, the, uh, the firms will not be will to continue to reject the using those uh, the cash flows. But anyway, so the situation is totally different from the 1997 situation. 
And also the next point is uh, sort of the relationship between uh, um, the, the growth strategy and the fiscal consolidation. Naturally, um, the, uh, the consumption tax rate hike should contribute to the promoting the fiscal consolidation. But having said that, I still prioritize the importance of the growth. And the, because uh, the, the key word of the abenomics is innovation-oriented economy, I fully support these ideas. And actually, the reason is very simple. If we are doing the same thing as the Asian neighbors, actually, there is no hope that Japan's uh, the standard of living or the wage rate should rise, or even we, we cannot f maintain the current uh, the standard of living if we are doing that thing. So that we have to differentiate ourselves from what the Asian neighbors are doing. And so that's why the, uh, the innovation is very important. And look at this chart. This chart highlights uh, the productivities um, the, by the industries. The uh, productivity has been rising uh, at the manufacturing sector the marvelously. There's no problem about that. But look at this uh, red line or pink line. That is the productivity of the, um, the service sector. It's, it's scarcely rising, but almost flat now. And the level of productivity is about half of the manufacturing. So that is a problem. That is a Japan's problems. So in order to raise the productivities through the innovation, the service sectors at the productivities must rise tremendously. How? There are two things. And one is a deregulation. So that's why the Abenomics is very important. And I hope the Abe will show his strong political leadership towards the further deregulation. And also um, the, the uh, <coughs> Um, they, we should invite more so the high-skilled workers from the rest of the world and high-skilled and uh, those companies from the rest of the world to uh, to uh, to meet with the demand in Japan because of the part of the regulations, uh, the high-value added services are not provided in Japan in the medical services, for example. So that must be changed anyway. But uh, well, still I would say the fiscal consolidation is also needed. Because uh, well, growth is needed, but um, the, the growth can be achieved through the other policies. So, but without the consumption tax rate hike, the, um, the fiscal consolidation will not be achieved. So there is some um, asymmetry between those uh, policies. And uh, the, then actually this uh, chart highlights the sort of the relationship between those two policies and monetary policy, fiscal policy, and the structural policies. Well, the, in the, for the time being, actually Japan is extremely a good situation. I'm very bullish on Japan and because uh, the, we are getting out of deflation and uh, this is great. As the BOJ can purchase any amount of the JGBs because uh, well, we, we, want a defl we want inflation. And uh, so the, the, even if whatever happens, actually BOJ can buy any amount of the JGBs in the market, even though the fiscal deficit is rising and government debt is rising. And, but this story will end if and when the, BO, uh, the inflation rate reaches 2%. Then that, at that time, the BOJ will have to start the tapering. But until then, actually the economy looks, will be extremely good, but once so the BOJ's 2% inflation policy is very ironic because uh, the, if the goal is achieved, something bad will happen. So can we call it, call it a goal or, or not? So the, therefore, the, once the inflation rate is, well, achieves the 2%, then actually the, what is needed, then actually the government will have to cut the issuance of the JGB. So that's why a two, a inflation rate hike is needed. And only the two percent, uh, sorry, the three percent point inflation rate, sorry, the, um, the consumption tax rate hike is not enough at all. So we have to see a continued process of the uh, consumption tax rate hike towards, in my view, at least fifteen percent, desirably twenty percent. And so the next, uh, the the coming three percent point in, uh, consumption tax rate hike is just the one's first step towards the long term. Uh, the process of the continued inf uh, the consumption tax rate hike. But because of the, the, the trauma people still have, so the, the next consumption tax rate hike should be quite successful. So that's why I believe the supplementary budget is, uh, is needed and as a sort of the sweetener 
for the um, the the for the general public, and uh, the, so the government uh, is expected to make an announcement tomorrow. The five trillion plus uh, the supplementary budget, and that is the, the, the purpose is to, the two hold uh, twofold. The one is to well increase the um, the public works to just raise the demand, and also the other is uh, the, the subsidy, direct subsidy to the lower income people as a consumption tax rate hike is the regressive. And the, but usually I don't support the idea of the uh, increase of fiscal spending because in many cases it's just a waste of money. But this time it is exceptional. If we should fail the, uh, the next consumption tax rate hike, uh, then actually the, we will not be able to raise the consumption tax rate forever. So the, this is why th I think that um, the, the, this time is uh, the different. But the basic uh, position, my position is the, uh, don't rely too much on the, uh, those uh, uh, the economic package. And the BOJ, and also the, in the meantime, uh, the BOJ can purchase any amount of the JGB. So if the economy should show any sign of the, um, the downturn, so the BOJ should be ready to purchase the, the JGBs. And as now U.S. will start the tapering shortly, well, we, we hope we, this is our uh, the forecast, then um, the, if the BOJ purchase more JGB, then the, the market will acknowledge that the direction of the monetary policies between uh, Japan and the U.S. would be the opposite. So that will weaken the end if other things being equal. And so that, that will be another sort of that, uh, the tailwinds for Japan. And on the growth strategies, and if you have a question, I'm very happy to answer the, the detail of the, uh, the growth strategies. So the, there are three core reforms. One is agriculture, second is the medical services, and the third is the labor market reforms. So the, those are actually the, are the main issues for the, the growth strategies. I hope that there should be some big progresses in, uh, uh, the, uh, from in Abe's announcement uh, the, that we, are like, we will hear the tomorrow. And also, how those reforms should be achieved. And uh, the establishing the national strategic districts is a very important tool to achieve that. And uh, well, we expect uh, governor, local governor, Tokyo's governor Inose will make a radical announcement to make uh, some part of Tokyo as uh, those uh, uh, the national strategic districts, um, and to invite many foreign companies and foreign businessmen with high with high skills, and uh, to promote the, actually the competition in Japan. <coughs> And uh, they also another very important aspect is the role of the foreign investors. One of the important reasons why Abenomics has been so successful is that the foreign investors are so much excited about the, well, the new um, the movement in Japan, so that they, they shortened the yen position to raise the dollar yen, and also they bought the Japan stocks. So without that, those events, the, um, the Abenomics wouldn't have been so successful. So I recommended to the, um, the senior policymakers at the uh, prime minister's office that you guys should invite those foreign investors to the prime minister's office to give them a glass of sake, and, the, the, and the, because they are the voters and the, on, the, on, on the economies. And, uh, and also the last thing that I'd like to emphasize is uh, uh, the importance of the corporate tax rate cut to below 25%. In Japan, well, many, still the, some people uh, think that the raising the ta consumption tax rate and the cutting corporate tax rate should be totally unfair because it gives only favor to the large corporations at the cost of the consumers. This is totally wrong. And uh, they, in my view, if, although it may take some time, but eventually the household or consumers would get the benefit from uh, an increase in the corporate the profit and uh, the just, uh, uh, well, Please look at this chart, and uh, the, this right-hand chart or, or left-hand chart shows uh, the um, the development of the uh, the profit and the um, the workers' incomes. Naturally, the profit. This is a pink line. It's very volatile, and the blue line is uh, uh, the workers' incomes. But the, that ratio, that is a labor's the share of the total income, 
is almost flat. In 2004 to, through 2008, the labor share declined very uh, drastically, but that was a global phenomenon. Japan was not the exception. But they, uh, in the aftermath of the Lehman, it jumped because the corporate profit plunged. So on average, actually, it's very stable. In other <coughs> words, if the corporate profit increases, eventually it will be returned to the workers. Well, th this is the implication of this chart. So then let, let's actually give the corporations more profit first. And then actually that, that will be distributed to the workers. And the lastly, uh, the, this is a, um, the sort of a, the breakdown of the, the growth rate in the, um, the, that we calculated uh, the, in the 2013 and 14. And the, and the underlying growth rate of the Japanese economy is around uh, mid 1%, 1 1.5 and 1.3 percent. But because of the, the economic package and the, um, the into, uh, consumption tax rate hike, we see some front-loading demand in 2013, and we see some payback in 2014. And the, what this table shows is uh, two things. Actually, the, um, the drag from the, cons the half of the drag of the consumption tax rate hike will be absorbed by the economic package. The second, and although well, our forecast of the uh, growth rate of the 2014 is 0.7%, but the, as the, um, the, the gross contribution of the um, gross, sorry, gross contribution from the economic package is 0. Uh, the 7 percent point, so that without the economic package, uh, the economic growth rate in 2014 is expected to zero. Thank you very much. So I'd like to pass the turn to uh, Shirakawa-san. Thank you very much. So you made a good case on uh, how we all should be happy to pay more taxes every time uh, we will open our wallet. I'm but uh, uh, now let's raise some doubt on this, uh, on this uh, decision of uh, hiking uh, from 5 to 8 percent and then possibly to 10 percent the consumption. So Mr. Shirakawa, uh, please raise some doubt on this. Thank you. Um, Kano-san was speaking standing. I'm speaking sitting. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kano-san is, is you know, older than myself, but um, I, I prefer to sit and speak. Um, the, I, I actually probably um, um, the asked to, to the um, secretary to uh, take a copy of my presentation, which is fairly short, only kind of four pages. If you have uh, hard copies uh, in front of you, uh, please just take a look at that. Uh, maybe in a talking, uh, in the end, I'd like to talk about a bit the uh, growth strategy, monetary policy kind of things, because you know, Kano San's view, in my understanding, is that you know, if if we lose this time. And if the political mess happens, um, growth strategy uh, initiatives will be delayed, and uh, that will make things really, you know, worse into the future or the medium run. So uh, I agree on that. But in the meantime, um, I, I tend to feel that um, the Japanese government, I think, the stance on growth strategy deregulation and uh, also the fiscal consolidation, very much uh, the underdeveloped. Well, I think the world itself seems to be fairly weak. And in, in that sense, I, I really focus on whether or not consumption tax hike is really you know, leading to a, any really bad situation in the economy. I'm, I'm fairly pessimistic on the reform, deregulation, growth strategy kind of thing. That's why I, I'd like to focus more on the uh, near-term economic, I think, the situation. And the main points I'd like to make uh, is, is on my presentation number, number one. The, first of all, the VAT hike uh, would have the negative implication on the economy, like in our understanding, roughly speaking, 1% of GDP, uh, or the 1% in terms of dampening effect. So roughly speaking, 5 trillion yen dampening effect on GDP. That will be totally offset by the supplementary budget, and a bit of the uh, growth strategy related uh, stimulus measures. So on surface, on surface, you have the minus five and plus five and zero. Fine, so as an economist, 
we, we tend to say that the dampening effect from VAT will be almost fully offset by the economic package, supplementary budget, and I think the, a part of the third dollar, which is the demand stimulus component. However, if I take a look at the uh, inside GDP type of kind of you know, uh, decomposition, uh, on page two, I have put a, some table, and that is the, um, the very end of the uh, table. Um, in our kind of calculation, this is the first round effect. Economists have to think about second round, like if this goes down, that may affect production, employment, wages, and that may affect expected inflation, and that would lead to another dampening kind of thing. We haven't yet, we haven't yet incorporated those second round, the third round effects. Very simple first round effect would be minus 3.7 trillion yen on consumption. And that will be 100% in our view offset by a pickup in corporate capex by 1.5 and pickup in public investment by one and pickup in exports by 1.2. This is a kind of a coincidence, but our point is the consumption down, but this 3.7 trillion in our estimate is fully offset by other demand components recovery. But think about the situation where consumers are spending less, but companies are spending more on capital expenditure. So as Kano san mentioned, what is really important is, is consumption declining less because of a pickup in wages or employment or increase in uh, the labor cost expenditure by companies. It's really happening or not. This is really important, the kind of, you know, the hypothesis to the economists. If you believe that profits going up, if companies spend more, I think the net net possibly positive. But if you do not think Japanese companies really paying on wages, I think the situation would be maybe on the surface offset each other, but impact on employment would be somewhat on, on I think the, in terms of the net impact would be downside because we do not think capital expenditure is really generating employment. Consumption is hard hit. Even though capex goes up, net impact on employment would be maybe negative. So in, in that sense, the government initiative on um, wage increases, like Abesan has been talking to many large corporations, a CEO sort of saying, why don't you, you spend more money? Mr. Aso has been very, very excited about this. We cannot ask any private corporation to raise wages by government initiative. It's a really strange thing to do, Aso san mentioned. I do not buy that argument you know, the, uh, fully, but in the meantime, I tend to feel that it's really the case for Japanese companies to you know, increase wages aggressively next, next April, and in my understanding, not much. Uh, of course, we don't know yet. We have to uh, look at what is happening on the spring wage negotiation next year. But remember that the large corporations, which make money and spending, uh, so um, which make money and paying taxes, there I think the share of the exp uh, labor expenses would be maybe only one third of, of, of overall economy. So it means small businesses. They are not necessarily paying their taxes. Not benefit from not much benefit from the uh, the tax incentives. So it is really difficult for us to say that the um, labor expenditure would be really increasing. But of course, and as Kandasan said, if the profits going up and if the profit share, so the profit labor share in terms of profits is stable, in theory, wages pick up. But we are a bit doubtful about that. So I think that that, that, that would be a difference from Kano-san maybe on, on the uh, labor uh, income side. And one thing really important is that if you take a look at uh, on page three in my, in, my, in my presentation, this is the very simple Phillips curve. And what is really strange going on in Japan, we, we are now the, uh, enjoying the even lower than 4% unemployment rate, like 3.7, 3.8%. But wages are declining. 
and the we have been very much puzzled by the continuous improvement in labor market conditions but remaining